welcome to this session of rabbit prototyping in today's session we will be discussing different concepts which are very important to understand when we are talking about rabbit prototyping the first and foremost thing that we are going to discuss is rabbit prototyping process itself generic rabbit prototyping process means which steps we need to follow to perform any type of rabbit prototyping irrespective of type of machine that we are using or type of technology that we are using so the first step for any rabbit prototyping process is to conceptualize the prototype and develop a CAD model for that particular prototype so if you want to develop something new then the first thing you have to have is an idea of how that particular component that particular product will look like and then you have to develop a CAD model you have to make your idea into a CAD model now this CAD model is normally a 3D model generated by softwares which will be having different formats of file depending on the software that you use if you are annex it will have a different formats it we if you are using autocad the quad model will have a different format and if you are using say uh, ansys or solidworks then also this cad model will have different file formats Normally, all these CAD models can be converted into a step file. Then, the next step is to convert this CAD file to an STL file. So, all these CAD models, all the file format that uh, are there for CAD models, you have to convert that file into an STL file. The STL file is a known as stereo lithography file. It is a standard format for any 3D printing uh, technology. So most of the 3D printing technology will use this STL file. Most of the machines and softwares uh, which are uh, there to produce a prototyping or 3D printing or additive manufacturing technology that will recognize this STL file. Now, after that STL file has been created, we have to transfer the STL file on a machine, on additive manufacturing machine. So, we are transferring simply the file on the machine. And then, once there is the, this STL file on the machine, we have to uh, have adjustment of some machine as uh, in case of CNC we are doing some setup as in case of simple lathe we have to mount tools and do some setups before starting manufacturing same is the case with rapid prototyping we have to do some machine setups depending on the technology you are using then the next step is to build the prototype so after machine setup you just start the machine and wait for the machine to complete the prototype this process building of the prototype will be automatic once there is uh, this build process is complete your prototype has been built by the machine you have to remove it and we have to do some cleanup and we have to do some post processing of the part this cleanup and post processing will depend on the technology that we are using for example if you are using 3d printing then the part will have some powder on it so after removing of the part you have to remove that extra powder that is on the part that is on the part cavities and once you have removed this extra powder we have to again uh, reheat some part to complete the polymerization process 
to make sure that the part is completely binded and it has sufficient strength. So to increase the strength, we do some steps after the part has been built. Mostly in 3D printing, heating of the part or heat treatment of some kind of the part is done. Once this post-processing is completed, then we can use this part or rapid prototype in any application. So this is the entire generic process of rapid prototyping. This is uh, similar for all the rapid prototyping technologies. Either it will be uh, say 3D printing or FDM or uh, you are doing stereolithography or you are doing selective resist syndrome. But more or less all these eight steps will be there in the process. Now, if we want to uh, visualize the process, this is a better understanding of what the process looks like. So this is the 3D model that you have built. Now STL file will have layers of this 3D model. We'll see in detail what we mean by STL file. But this 3D model is converted into the STL file, which is a layer by layer file. Then the machine itself will generate the tool path and we transfer this tool path into 3D printer. And the 3D printer will then build the part and this will be the finished part which can be then used in the application. So this part is already finished, cleanup and post processing has been done on this part already. So this is the process of uh, rapid prototyping in general. Now, one by one, as we have discussed, for first step is to generate, conceptualize and generate a CAD model. So, if you are making a mechanism which works on, uh, say, this uh, planetary gear mechanism, you must have studied this planetary gears, gear system while studying machine design. This is, this is the gear system that is extensively used in gearbox of automobiles, especially in the gearbox of cars. So, if you want to uh, make a prototype of this type of system, then the first thing is you need to have this CAD model. Once you have the CAD model, you convert it to STL file. Now, this is an example of STL file. Here, this we, the, that you are seeing is layer by layer building of the STL file. So, STL file will have different layers and this top portion is uh, increasing uh, layers of each profile. So, what this shows is profile of each layer if you move upward. So this is what STL file will be looking like. Then once the STL file is built, we transfer the file on the machine, then we set up the machine and this is the building process. So the building process is also layer by layer and we are getting complete part. Then we have to remove the part and we have to do some cleaning. So this is uh, a person is cleaning a 3D printed part and then if needed we have to uh, do some post processing also. And finally after you have done all the cleaning we will have a model of this type of uh, planetary mechanism. So, if you recall the model that we have created and the final 3D printed part that we have, that is here, these are both of the planetary gear mechanism. And we can build this 
entire assembly in single go with the help of 3D printing. So you do not need to have manufactured this uh, outer uh, ring, all these inner gear and planet separately. You can build entire mechanism in single go with the help of 3D printing if you have a technological advanced enough machine. The normal machines that we are using for that we have to build all this separately and then we have to assemble it. But if you have advanced enough machine you can build this entire assembly in single go. Okay, so this is all about the generic process of rapid prototyping. You have to remember all these steps because those are compulsorily, uh, those steps will be compulsorily involved in any rapid prototyping process irrespective of the technology you are using. Why we are, I am saying that uh, irrespective of the technology you are using because rapid prototyping is not a single technology. Rapid prototyping is a broader term which can be achieved via different technologies like stereolithography is one technique, one technology that can be used for rapid prototyping. Similarly, fuse deposition molding is another technique which can be used for rapid prototyping and 3D printing is one of the techniques which can be used for rapid prototyping. So I hope all this is clear by now. Happy learning.